Hello, this is Par64 Guy, and today I've got a woodworking project I'm going to walk through with you. So what we're looking at here is a desk that was purchased for the customer. It is a solid wood desk and a hutch that was purchased from IKEA. The customer liked the combination of the two, and what I need to do is figure out how to mount them together. So the hutch came with these brackets and screws to secure it to what was intended to be an IKEA desk, but because this is not a IKEA desk, these are not going to work. Uh, that and their length, frankly, is a joke in terms of being able to secure the hutch. The problem with that bracket is that the desk and the hutch really want to be solid against a wall to keep the hutch from tilting backwards. Unfortunately, the room has this baseboard molding, which will prevent the desk from sitting flush against the wall. That gap is going to allow the hutch to be able to be pushed backwards, and that bracket's just not going to hold. It'll tear the screws right out. So what I'm going to do is figure out a way to put a piece of wood uh, along the back of the hutch that will allow it to not only sit flush against the wall, but close up that gap from a, um, an aesthetic point of view. So when you look at the back of the desk with the hutch sitting on top of it, you'll see that the problem that I'm facing, which is where the edge of the hutch does not line up with the edge of the desk. Now, if this were a match set, like from Ikea, then this bracket would just mount here, and it would connect the desk to the hutch. Now, because I don't have that, what I'm going to do is fashion up a piece of wood that will line up, be wide enough to cover both, and also be able to screw to both of these, also making it large enough, so that way any leaning force that's on this hutch won't just tear the screws out. It will also go up the length of the hut, or the height of the hutch, and I'm actually going to go to the edge of uh, to the edge of the backboard here, and I'll do a miter on it, so it gives a little more aesthetically pleasing uh, appearance. Next thing is now to uh, design this piece of wood and produce it. So with any design project, you have to start with some sketches and measurements. So here I have my paper that I've done. Uh, I'm going to make two braces, one for either side of the back of the desk. And I've got the overall length, what I'm going to do, along with the locations of the screw holes. And then there's a couple of other issues that I need to address. Uh, the first is the fact that the hutch has a small uh, piece of... Um, like a luon, yeah, it's a very, it serves as a whiteboard material as well as just the overall backing of the uh, hutch. That is causing a misalignment between the back of the hutch and the back of the desk. And what I'll do is I'm going to cut a notch, if I remember my woodworking terms properly, that would be a rabbit, uh, in the back of the brace. And that way it will be able to sit flush against both the surface of the desk and the surface of the hutch. Now, to address that misalignment that I talked about before, I'm going to use some uh, furring strips. If I line that up with the edge of the desk, or the edge of the hutch, which is the dominant thing that's going to be noticed, uh, down lower on the desk, uh, it's actually going to be butted up against another piece of furniture, so that will be less obvious if there's a misalignment. So I'm going to just use the uh, edge of the hutch as the um, the alignment point and then what I did here is I took some measurements so that the screw holes will be roughly centered on the respective pieces of wood so the hutch is 1 and 3 16 wide the desk is 5 6 uh, 5 8 wide or 10 16 so doing a little bit of math and calculations I found that if I locate my screws screw holes in the brackets 1930 seconds for the top holes and at one inch for the bottom holes. That should give me the alignment I need to get centered on the wood to minimize the chance I'm going to split anything. I'm also going to pre-drill pilot holes for everything to minimize the uh, chances of splitting. On the braces themselves, I'm going to do uh, stepped holes. I'm going to do pilot hole for the... Uh, or a larger hole to be able to sink the head of the screw and recess it, and then I'll have a smaller uh, through hole that will 
allow me to just slide the screw right through. That way I'm not biting into the brace. The brace is strictly there. It's being sandwiched between the screw and the uh, the desk or hutch. And that way it should get uh, make it easier to assemble. All right, so I'm down in the workshop, and I've just finished cutting the two 45-degree miters on the braces using a power, power miter saw. And now I'm going to mark and drill the holes in each brace. Okay, to save time because these are symmetrical, what I've done is I've just transferred the pencil marks to mark the location of each hole to the second brace. Uh, it took a little bit of you know back and forth measuring, you know, the whole measure twice, cut once type of deal. I want to make sure that these are pretty much even, so transfer the marks. Now I'll just mark the location of the actual holes and drill the second brace. drilled now. So I think we're all set and the reason for the uh, counter drilling is so that this will get recessed in there and also sets my maximum depth for the screw so I can pre-drill and hide the uh, hide the screw heads. So that way if I butt this up against the wall I don't have to worry about scratching the wall with the uh, screw heads. Okay, fabrication of the two pieces is now complete, with the exception of painting. So I have the uh, notch that I've cut in here using a uh, table saw, and then a scroll saw to make up for the uh, square cut that the uh, table saw couldn't do. So you can see here, there's the alignment now. It fits nice and snug. Time for painting, and then installation. I'm going to do the score and snap technique to cut the plexiglass. So I have this clamped to a work table and I'm just going to score it with a utility knife and do it you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however many times it takes until I'm comfortable it's through enough and then I will take it and very carefully snap it just like you would a piece of drywall. So the plexiglass protector is now in place. Uh, the final steps I had to take were to just sand the edge. I actually put a little bit of a, a bevel on there just to um, just make it so it's not a sharp edge. The plexiglass can have a little bit of an edge on it when it's cut. So uh, just a little bit of sanding took care of that. The first brace is now installed. So I'm off to the second one. What I've done first is pre-drilled and installed one screw to hold the brace in place. And now with it homed in, I'm ready to drill, pre-drill the other ones. Okay, do a quick check for alignment. Looks good. Let's go ahead and drive in the screw. Screws are in. At this point, the hutch is mounted to the desk and secured. So, one last thing I'd like to do is allow the user of the desk to keep as much free room as possible on the uh, workspace. So, the LEDs I purchased are uh, from two vendors. One was uh, online through Amazon. I picked up this uh, rotary dimmer and uh, adapter cable as well as the power supply. The LEDs I actually got from a friend of mine who owns a company called Ajro Illuminations. So I used this Dremel bit to carve the hole in the back. Uh, it was a lot easier to do than trying to drill it 
because it is a magnetic whiteboard, there's a thin layer of metal in there, so it was a little bit more difficult to get that hole through. So once that was done, uh, I now have a path to run my wires, and actually what I'm going to do is route the LEDs through that hole. I used a piece of speaker wire to extend the cable, and I'm going to run this through that slot and behind the desk, so that way it will run to the um, conveniently placed dimmer that the operator user of the desk can uh, easily actuate from her seat, and then this will plug in uh, to the outlet behind the desk. Alright, last thing to do on the LEDs was to secure the wires. So I just used some nail-in cable management devices to hold the um, to hold the cable in place. I did have a little bit of extra here. Uh, I cut the wire a little longer just in case I had to do anything like remove the hutch for any reason. Uh, just made it a little bit easier. I ended up also dressing the wire for the dimmer just came right along tacked one uh, device here holds that in place and then the rest tucked nicely right into that gap between the desk and the uh, brace so we are all set the desk is ready to be moved into position uh, the rest of the plastic removed from the plexiglass top plug in the LEDs and then customer can begin to use her desk Okay, desk is all done, put back in its place. Customer can now go ahead and start using her built-in light to actually get some work done. That does it for this project. I will attach some links to the supplies that I used for it. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, feel free to leave me some feedback in the comments section so I know what to do better, and also if there's any ideas you'd like to see me do, I will go ahead and uh, do my best to try and make it happen. Thanks a lot, this is Par64Guy. Later.